Nudity in any form is prohibited, as is indecent or undue exposure. Okay, we're doing it. We're reading the comics code, the original version from 1954. I'm Sasha, this is Casually Comics, and this video has been promised for a while on this channel, just exploring what exactly was in the code. It can be kind of difficult to decide where to start with the comics code authority because there's so much history and intrigue behind it, with the actual Senate hearings to rumors of the Mafia's involvement, to how the rules shaped up to purposely destroy certain companies, because that did happen, there was definitely a targeted push towards EC Comics. But it's one of those things where the behind the scenes gets you such an intriguing and interesting point that can overshadow what was actually inside of the code itself. You can be waylaid and end up talking for hours about all the lead up to it, the fears of juvenile delinquency, Frederick Wortham's seduction of the innocent, which was a separate part to consider. That was less delinquency and more perversion. But both of those factored in. He testified at these hearings. Because of all this pressure and fear surrounding comics at the time, the industry had to decide to regulate itself or face government regulation. So they came up with a series of rules and they would have to run all comics through these and get the approval for them to get their little stamp to show that they were okay. That if your kids read these, they weren't going to go rob a bank or murder somebody or engage in some kind of delinquent sexual activity. Or be swindled. That was the part that often gets ignored, the fact that they added some very intense advertising rules into the comics. Now there are some interesting videos out there about the history and buildup leading up to it. I even did a brief overview years ago, but what I want to focus on here is what is in the actual code. Because we talk about all the time, make jokes about, oh, that wouldn't get past the code, or ooh, they snuck that by the code. Let's, without preamble, read the rules. So that way, when we're looking at some of the older material, particularly in between 1954 and 1971, you'll be able to glean just what exactly is being subverted, what rules are being worked within, and just how this would impact how you had to create. Also, the different impacts that would have on different companies who came up at different times. For example, if you were DC or National Comics when this would have rolled out, you would have a very different experience with the code than, say, Marvel, who rebranded in the 60s, because there'd be different levels of scrutiny upon each company based upon how and when they came into being. Also based on the popularity of the characters slash who was specifically called out. It would give some more freedom than others. Not to mention who is in charge of editorial or who is staffing each of these comic companies needs will vary and that will determine how certain of the more subjective clauses are handled. But enough of that. You want to hear what they actually are. What does it say? What's in the box? So let's go through and read them dramatically. Initially when I planned this video I was going to be sitting in a chair and all of those things but I couldn't get the audio or the look to go how I wanted so we're here in our normal spot. So the entire code as well as the lead up to it and the language surrounding it has been preserved. I'm not going to read the entire lead up but basically it's saying that they are going to adhere to the standards that made comics great. That they've pledged themselves to a series of principles so that they won't be responsible for the moral degradation of society. There's a lot of weight being placed upon comics here. It's very interesting because in some cases you can see that weight still being applied to this genre or you can see it shifted out to other forms of entertainment like video games. I will read the one paragraph leading up to the first general standards of editorial matter. They are confident that this positive and forthright statement will provide an effective bulwark for the protection and enhancement of the American reading public, and that will become a landmark in the history of self-regulation for the entire communications industry. Well, I mean, that part is definitely true. It certainly is a landmark. So code for editorial matter, general standards, section A. These are the rules that are going to hit the horror and crime genres. Just decimate them. Get ready. One, crime shall never be presented in such a way as to create sympathy for the criminal, to promote distrust of the forces of law and justice, or to inspire others with a desire to imitate criminals. No cool criminals. Stop it. Two, no comic shall explicitly present the unique details and methods of a crime. So in the golden age, sometimes they'd go into details. It'd be like an episode of Forensic Files. They would start to explain how certain things were happening. No more of that. Stop it. People are going to copy that. That's why we need to move into a more science fiction-y, not really quite as realistic type of crime. This is going to see the downfall of the mafia criminal and the rise of the supervillain. Three, policemen, judges, government officials, and respected institutions shall never be presented in such a way as to create disrespect for established authority. Four, if crime is depicted, which it most definitely will be, it shall be as a sordid and unpleasant activity. So basically no glamorizing it. We can't make it cool or fun. Five, Criminals shall not be presented so as to be rendered glamorous or to occupy a position which creates a desire for emulation. So as you can see, there's some overlap here. So this section, you don't have as much wiggle room as you will in some of the later ones. They're creating overlaps that you can't really squeeze your way out of this one. Six, in every instance, good shall triumph over evil and the criminal punished for his misdeeds. So this is the one where you'll see where sometimes the story is going along and then abruptly at the end, it's just 
wrap up time. The criminal is in jail now. Seven, scenes of excessive violence will be prohibited. Scenes of brutal torture, excessive and unnecessary knife and gunplay, physical agony, gory and gruesome crime shall be eliminated. This is one of those things that's targeting, especially EC, because they used to go hard. Some of their covers were used as an example, like the infamous cover where the woman has been beheaded and the guy's just there holding her head. They had a bunch of covers that were brought up as too much, inappropriate, gonna desensitize the youth. And crime and horror comics were known for being extra gruesome. They were gonna have to stop that. And you'll see some images of befores and afters and it really tones it down. That can really take the teeth out of it a little bit. Those genres would keep going, but they would decline without the ability to be quite as shocking as they once had been. Eight, no unique or unusual methods of concealed weapons shall be shown. Nine, instances of law enforcement officers dying as a result of criminal activities should be discouraged. So we're not outright banning that, but we're gonna side eye you basically. Like why are you? Why are you writing that? What are you trying to say? 10, the crime of kidnapping shall never be portrayed in any detail, nor shall any profit accrue to the abductor or kidnapper. The criminal or the kidnapper must be punished in every case. This is 1954, so we're a bit hypersensitive about the kidnapping at this moment. This is one of those ones that over time, as the sensitivity to certain incidents that they're referring to fades into history and into the background and people come up who aren't as familiar with it, you'll see people relax a bit more on this one. 11, the letters of the word crime Crime on a comic magazine cover shall never be appreciably greater in dimension than the other words contained in the title. The word crime shall never appear alone on a cover. This is one of those things where if you get into the behind the scenes of some of the people involved and their rivalries, where it makes a bit more sense why they're going so hard after this specific genre. It's not just about thinking about the children. It's often just the garb that these changes come cloaked in. But then when you dive in, there's a whole bunch of other reasons underneath that suit. So that can be part of it, but it's rarely the sole part. These things are rarely truly purely altruistic. And our last in general standards A, rule number 12, restraint in the use of the word crime in titles or subtitles shall be exercised. So not only can it not be big, it can't be alone, but also could you maybe just not use it? like at all. General standards part B, we're coming for the horror now. We got the crime and the suspense because at this period in history, the superhero genre post-war had really declined. So all of the other genres were doing a lot better. After these rules hit, you see how restrictive they are towards some of these other genres. So it paved space for the rise of the superhero yet again, because it's easier to work with them in these rules because they're so archetypal. Anyway, general standards B, number one, no comic magazine shall use the word horror or terror in its title. Two, all scenes of horror, excessive bloodshed, gory or gruesome crimes, depravity, lust, sadism, masochism shall not be permitted. All of it. The spanking, the all of it. Get it out, get it out, get it out. We'll find ways to put it back in later, but for now out. Three, all lurid, great word, unsavory, gruesome illustrations shall be eliminated. So this is very subjective. This is lurid. This is one of those I know it when I see it type of thing. Four, inclusion of stories dealing with evil shall be used or shall be published only where the intent is to illustrate a more issue and in no case shall either be presented alluringly nor so as to injure the sensibilities of the reader injure the sensibilities of the reader this is one where if you got some kind of person you didn't like you you could have a really hard time getting your story through because injure the sensibilities of the reader what does that mean it could mean anything and this is one of those interesting cases where you can see that there are still things like this that happen to this day where you have people who go in and decide what is offensive, what isn't, and how people should feel about it and whether or not people's sensibilities are offended. That still happens. A lot of these things, if you think about it, are still occurring. It's just these social mores have changed. So what the rules about what can and can't be depicted are have shifted. And it's not written down anymore or at least it probably isn't. If it is written anywhere, it's uh, not been seen. Number five, and this is the last one for general standards B. We covered most of it in A. Scenes dealing with or instruments associated with walking dead, torture, vampires and vampirism, ghouls, cannibalism, and werewolfism are prohibited. So all those supernatural creatures, Bye bye until later when we'll phase them back in, especially in 1971. We'll have some sneaking in before that, but 1971 is where the code is revised and we get the new version. Let's you have things like vampires and werewolves, but not zombies because they weren't considered to have enough of a literary background. So you had zoo vampires. General standards part C, and this one comes with a preamble. All elements or techniques not specifically mentioned herein, but which are contrary to the spirit and intent of the code and are considered violations of good taste or decency shall be prohibited. So this is 
the one where it's like, even if we didn't write it down, if we feel that you're being a bit too edge, we're still gonna censor you. Dialogue, one. Profanity, obscenity, smut, vulgarity, or words or symbols which have acquired undesirable meanings are forbidden. Two, special precautions to avoid references to physical afflictions or deformities shall be taken. I guess those offend people's sensibilities. Three, although slang and colloquialisms are acceptable, excessive use should be discouraged, and wherever possible, good grammar shall be employed. I feel like they got real lax with this one. Looking at you, Teen Titans, and other books. Now you're grooving good looking. They definitely did not go as hard for the slang one. Can we bring that one back? No more drip, no more goblin mode, all those things. Well, then have less things to laugh about, but I can at least get behind the spirit of that one. Not for the reason they put it in here, but just because those things data work, not because I'm worried about the grammar of society. Now we have a section on religion. There's only one rule here, and it's ridicule or attack on any religious or racial group is never permissible. Now, some people are going to feel that they didn't really adhere to that. Based on their standards and what was socially acceptable at the time, they may have felt they did, but mileage is going to vary. Costume, number one. Nudity in any form is prohibited, as is indecent or undue exposure. This was a fun section where they went through the covers of the different female costumes and it was just lewd, lurid, too much. Two, suggestive and salacious illustration or suggestive posture is unacceptable. Stop it. Nobody is to be titillated reading these comics. Three, all characters shall be depicted in dress reasonably acceptable to society. We want all the spandex covering everything multicolored. That's acceptable to society. Showing some skin or salacious posing, unacceptable. What's acceptable obviously shifts over time as fashion changes. Four, now we're going to single out the females. Females shall be drawn realistically without exaggeration of any physical qualities. Note, it should be recognized that all prohibitions dealing with costume, dialogue, or artwork applies as specifically to the cover of a comic magazine as they do to the contents. It's no tricking. No tame cover and then inside it's just boobs. It's so fascinating going through and reading this and then comparing if you were to apply it to an old comic or a new one. It's just so interesting. Okay, next. Marriage and sex. One. Divorce shall not be treated humorously nor presented as desirable. Well, they threw that right out the window. The devil took my marriage. Two. Illicit sex relations are neither to be hinted at nor portrayed. Violent love scenes as well as sexual abnormalities are unacceptable. I mean, when they say violent love scenes, they mean something else, but they're not going to say it. Don't want to offend our sensibilities. This is one of those things where you're going to have to imagine what they mean. But you know, hopefully you do, because if not, they're not going to give you the stamp. Three, respect for parents, the moral code, and for honorable behavior shall be fostered. A sympathetic understanding of the problems of love is not a license for morbid distortion. Four, the treatment of live romance stories shall emphasize the value of the home and the sanctity of marriage. So as you can see, here's another genre cut off at the knees. Romance. Some of the early romance stories went so hard. They were torrid beyond lurid. They went to some places. We can't have that. So that's when you get the really watered down and it's going to kind of make it a lot sillier. It's definitely not going to go as hard as it once did. And it's also going to get very tropey and stereotypical. And lots of the female characters in particular are going to regress in order to fit these new standards in pretty much every genre so they can emphasize the values of the home and marriage. But not realistically or complexly. Instead, it's usually highly idealized versions or versions that almost border on the satirical. You can see things by tracking like Lois Lane in the Golden Age and then the Silver Age. Even though Silver Age Lois is a gift that keeps on giving because she's so ridiculous. Five passion or romantic interest shall never be treated in such a way as to stimulate the lower and baser emotions. We don't want anything hot or stimulating. Six, seduction and rape, oh now we're saying it, shall never be shown or suggested. But if we said that, then what's a violent love scene? What's the difference? I need to know. I need to see the notes of someone who submitted things, then see what the difference is. Seven, sex perversion or any inference to same is strictly forbidden. So you see with rules like this, why there is some merit to some of the discussions around coding of certain types of relationships. However, coding is complicated and it's not always happening when people think it is. And there needs to be a deliberate intent meant to the coding. And sometimes it's there, sometimes it isn't. Sometimes creators will retroactively say they did it when they didn't. Other times some creators were, but follow-up creators weren't. And so because the history of characters is ever evolving and growing, it becomes a complicated tapestry of whose version do you take? Or sometimes there'll be one panel that has misidentified its coding when it isn't. Or panels that'll be missed 
and said they aren't coding when they are. So it can be a complicated thing and needs to be taken on a case by case basis. There isn't really a generalization that one can make. People like to say that there is because that makes it easier. But here on Casually Comics, we like to make it complicated. <laughs> now we're on to the last part, which is the code for advertising, which is the part that people tend to skip over because they're like, oh, that's boring. No, it's important. These regulations are applicable to all magazines published by members of the Comics Magazine Association of America, Inc. So they all branded together. Like all the companies got together under this umbrella to make sure that then the public would be appeased. That's the thing. I imagine that most people after all of the fur and the fervor and it went out of the media cycle forgot. I imagine they didn't really worry too much after about comics because news cycles, even if they were a bit slower back in the day, still moved quickly. And so that would have moved on and then this code would linger for decades. It's very interesting to think about how these moments of moral panic can have these lingering effects or see how quickly one could turn around and implement something like this again. Good taste shall be the guiding principle to the acceptance of advertising. <laughs> said no advertiser ever. One, liquor and tobacco advertising is not acceptable. Two, advertising of sex or sex instruction books are unacceptable. Three, the sale of picture postcards, pinups, art studies, or any other reproduction of nude or semi-nude figures is prohibited. Art studies, the scandal, those people pretending to study art. Four, advertising for the sale of knives or realistic gun facsimiles is prohibited. Five, advertising for the sale of fireworks is prohibited. Six, advertising dealing with the sale of gambling equipment or printed matter dealing with gambling shall not be accepted. No loot boxes in our comics, we don't want them. Seven, nudity with matricious purpose and salacious posture shall not be permitted in the advertising of any product. Clothed figures shall never be presented in such a way as to be offensive or contrary to good taste or morals. Imagine sitting down and coming up with all these. I can, and that's the scary thing. Eight, to the best of his ability, each publisher shall ascertain that all statements made in advertisements conform to fact and avoid misrepresentation. Well, they all failed. Everybody needs to go home, take the stamp off of everything. Nine, advertisement of medical, health, or toiletry products of questionable nature are to be rejected. Advertisements for medical, health, or toiletry products endorsed by the American Medical Association or the American Dental Association shall be deemed acceptable if they conform with other conditions of the advertising code. Are there a bunch of sexy dentistry ads out there that I'm unaware of? No snake oil though, that's the point. They don't want any snake oil sold to the children. So that, that is the 1954 version of the code. So when you see that stamp, all of these things are the things that the comic had to run through in order to get approved. Now, obviously mileage would have varied on how much scrutiny was given to each issue or how serious everybody was about it. Sometimes you can tell that some issues skirted or people didn't care or as time went on they just got more and more lax with it. This is a lot of a lot but especially at the start you'll see that this had a stranglehold over the Silver Age. Working around all of these one would have had to be very clever or just change their mindset as the type of stories that were being told for a bit. And and again, you see that in the generational shift, as new people start to come up, they just don't have as much concern for this. And I imagine over time, these rules would very much begin to change. Now, it must be known that this type of censorship was not unique to comics. In fact, in a way, this spoke to the popularity and the rise they were having on the American cultural scene. Because for example, film had been censored this aggressively decades earlier with the Hayes Code, which was equally, if not more intense in some regards. All those movies where the husband and wife have separate rooms, all kinds of things to not imply any kind of essence or whisper of sex. I want to read a preamble, the first paragraph from the code. The comic book medium having come of age on the American cultural scene must measure up to its responsibilities. Constantly improving techniques and higher standards go hand in hand with these responsibilities. With great power comes great responsibility to censor yourself aggressively. So now that you know what's in the code, actually, what do you think of it? Are there things in it that you actually agree with or think that aren't that bad of an idea? Are there things that you feel are still low key in play or that have come back into play? Does it give you a different appreciation for comics in the Silver Age as it moves from 1954 to 1971 before the code is revised? Do you want to hear the revised code? It's a lot shorter. <laughs> they don't change too much. It's mostly just that you can now have supernatural creatures. That's the biggest change. Then you got the supernatural boom and Marvel goes ham. It was also an acknowledgement that people weren't really following some of these rules anymore. And so might as well calm it down, especially surrounding the crime and the way evil was depicted sections. That's part of why, again, you start to see things go so hard. When you take those kind of reins off and just tell people, okay, the box is expanded, it's not surprising when you get some very aggressive entries into the field. I've said a lot of words in this video that are no-no words, so we'll see how this goes. But I want to be authentic. I don't want one of those videos where it's just all kinds of new speak that you have on YouTube or TikTok or Twitter to circumvent, again, 
the kind of modern code of the terms of service that you have to work within, oh my god, it's all still here in all mediums, just it's evolved. It's evolving, changing, history repeats, history is a circle. Oh god, sorry. Behind the scenes moment, that was my kid's school emailing me that I need to upload any pictures to go in the yearbook right now. It's bolded. People have been asking for this video for a while. I hope it was entertaining to hear what was in the code. Tell me all of your thoughts down below. I want to hear them. Thanks so much for taking some time out of your day I spent discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it. I'm going to go upload some yearbook photos and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.